back to Cornerstone YouTube channel. Today I am going to tell 5 amazing story. Let's start with number 1. A crow lived in the forest and was absolutely satisfied in life. But one day he saw a swan. This swan is so white, he thought, and I am so black. This swan must be the happiest bird in the world. He expressed his thoughts to the swan. Actually, the swan replied, I was feeling that I was the happiest bird around until I saw a parrot, which has two colors. I now think the parrot is the happiest bird in creation. The crow then approached the parrot. The parrot explained, I lived a very happy life until I saw a peacock. I have only two colors, but the peacock has multiple colors. The crow then visited a peacock in the zoo and saw that hundreds of people had gathered to see him. After the people had left, the crow approached the peacock. Dear peacock, the crow said, you are so beautiful. Every day thousands of people come to see you. When people see me, they immediately shoo me away. I think you are the happiest bird on the planet. The peacock replied, I always thought that I was the most beautiful and happy bird on the planet. But because of my beauty, I am entrapped in this zoo. I have examined the zoo very carefully. And I have realized that the crow is the only bird not kept in a cage. So for past few days, I have been thinking that if I were crow, I could happily roam everywhere. That's our problem too. We make a necessary comparison with others and become sad. We don't value what God has given us. This all leads to the vicious cycle of unhappiness. Learn to be happy in what you have instead of looking at what you don't have. There will always be someone who will have more or less than you have. Person who is satisfied with what he she has, is the happiest person in the world. Number 2. Once a father and son went to the kite flying festival. The young son became very happy, seeing the sky filled with colorful kites. He too asked his father to get him a kite and a thread with a roller so he can fly a kite too. So, the father went to the shop at the park where the festival was being held. He purchased kites and a roll of thread for his son. His son started to fly a kite. Soon, his kite reached high up in the sky. After a while, the son said, Father, it seems that the thread is holding up a kite from flying higher. If we break it, it will be free and will go flying even higher. Can we break it? So, the father cut the thread from a roller. The kite started to go a little higher. That made the son very happy. But then, slowly, the kite started to come down. And, soon it fell down on the terrace of the unknown building. The young son was surprised to see this. He had cut the kite loose of its thread so it can fly higher, but instead, it fell down. He asked his father, Father, I thought that, after cutting off the thread, the kite can freely fly higher. But why did it fall down? The father explained, Son, at the height of life that we live in, we often think that some things we are tied with and they are preventing us from going further higher. The thread was not holding the kite from going higher, but it was helping it stay higher when the wind slowed down and when the wind picked up, you helped the kite go up higher in a proper direction through the thread. And, when we cut the thread, it fell down without the support you were providing to the kite through the thread. The son realized his mistake. Moral, sometimes we feel that we can progress quickly and reach to the newer heights in our life if we were not tied up with our family, our home. But, we, fail to realize that our family, our loved ones help us survive the tough time in our lives with their support and encourage us to reach higher heights in our life. They are not holding us, but are supporting us. Never let go of them. Number 3. A sage was passing through the capital city of the famous king. While he was walking, he noticed a single currency coin on the road. He picked it up. He was satisfied with his simple living and he had no use of that coin. So, he planned to donate it to the one who is in need of it. He strolled around the streets throughout the day but didn't find any one such. Finally, he reached the rest area and spent a night there. Next morning, he wakes up in the morning for his daily activities and sees that a king is going for his invasion of another state with his war-ready army. When the king saw the sage standing, he ordered his army to be stopped. He came to the sage and said, Oh great sage, I am going to war to win another state so that my state can be expanded. So bless me to be victorious. After thinking, sage gave a single currency coin to the king. 
The king was confused and annoyed with this because what use he has for a single coin while he is already one of the richest kings. He curiously asked a sage, what's the meaning of this one coin? A sage explained, oh great king, I found this coin yesterday while strolling around the streets of your capital city. But I had no use of it. So, I had decided that I will donate it to someone needy. I strolled around till the evening in your capital, but found no one such. Everyone was living a happy life. It seemed that they were satisfied with what they had. So I found no one to give this coin. But today, the king of this state, still have the desire to gain more and not satisfied with what he already has, I felt you were in need of this coin. The king realized his mistake and gave up the planned war. Moral, we all should learn to be happy with what we have. Yes. We all desire more or better than we already have, but do not waste a chance of enjoying what you already have. There are those who may not have what you have, and there will be some who have lots more than you have. Do not always compare. Be happy and lead a healthy life. Number 4. Once upon a time, there were two neighbors living next to each other. One of them was a retired teacher and another was an insurance agent who had a lot of interest in technology. Both of them had planted different plants in their garden. The retired teacher was giving a small amount of water to his plants and didn't always give a full attention to them, while the other neighbor, interested in technology, had given a lot of water to his plants and looked after them too well. The retired teacher's plants were simple but looked good. The insurance agent's plants were much fuller and greener. One day, during the night, there was a heavy rain and a wind due to a minor storm next morning both of the neighbors came out to inspect the damage to their garden the neighbor who was an insurance agent saw that his plants came off from the roots and were totally destroyed but the retired teacher's plants were not damaged at all and were standing firm the insurance agent neighbor was surprised to see it he went to the retired teacher and asked we both grew the same plants together i actually looked after my plants better than you did for yours and even gave them more water. Still, my plants came off from the roots, while yours didn't. How is that possible? The retired teacher smiled and said, you gave your plants more attention and water, but because of that they didn't need to work themselves for it. You made it easy for them, while I gave them just an adequate amount of water and let their roots search for more. And because of that, their roots went deeper and that made their position stronger. That is why my plants survived. Moral, this story is about parenting where children are like plants. If everything is given to them, they will not understand the hard work it takes to earn those things. They will not learn to work themselves and respect it. Sometimes it's best to guide them instead of giving them. Teach them how to walk, but let them follow their path. Number 5. One day a professor entered the classroom and asked his students to prepare for a surprise test. They waited anxiously at their desks for the test to begin. The professor handed out the question paper with the text facing down as usual. Once he handed them all out, he asked his students to turn the page and begin. To everyone's surprise, there were no questions, just a black dot in the center of the page. The professor seeing the expression on everyone's face, told them the following, I want you to write what you see there. The confused students got started on the inexplicable task. At the end of the class, the professor took all the answer papers and started reading each one of them aloud in front of all the students. All of them with no exceptions described the black dot, trying to explain its position in the middle of the sheet etc. After all had been read, the classroom was silent. The professor began to explain, I am not going to grade on you this, I just wanted to give you something to think about. No one wrote about the white part of the paper. Everyone focused on the black dot and the same happens in our lives. We have a white paper to observe and enjoy, but we always focus on the dark spots. Our life is a gift given to us by God with love and care. We always have reasons to celebrate, nature renewing itself every day, our friends around us, the job that provides our livelihood, the miracles we see every day. However, we insist on focusing only on the dark spots, the health issues that bother us, the lack of money, the complicated relationship with a family member, the disappointment with the friends at EC. 
The dark spots are very small compared to everything we have in our lives, but they are the ones that pollute our minds. Take your eyes away from the black spots in your life. Enjoy each one of your blessings, each moment that life gives you. Be happy and live a life positively. Moral As the professor explained, life is a bag of good and bad things, we all have positives and negatives along the way. Thank you.